What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Spore Showcase video. In today's video I'm going to be showcasing the um, aquatic creatures of Magnus. So yeah, I'm going to be showcasing the Colossus. Oh, no, did not mean to do that. I'm going to be showcasing the uh, Colossosaurus, Cacarodominus, you know, all the aquatic creatures that have been released so far. Minus the Soroichthys, because I haven't created that yet. But if, but if you end up enjoying this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. It would really help out a ton. And let me know what you think of these creatures in the comment section down below. And without further ado, let's get on with the video. Up first, we have the very first aquatic creature, the Colossosaurus, which is the Mosasaurus descendant. Now with this guy... I kind of want him, wanted to make him kind of look like Titanosaurus from uh, Terror of Mechagodzilla mixed with like a whale and a shark, I guess, and a Mosasaur. Like, and notice the Mosasaur body, the, the whale tail fins, and the dorsal fin that the shark has. And... Yeah, it's just... Looks really cool in my opinion. Like, I think I did a pretty good job with the Mosasaurus and Colossosaurus in this case. Let me know if you want me to do, like, um, their ancestors in the comment section down below. Like, I mean, like, T-Rex and Mosasaurus. My versions of those dinosaurs. The only problem I have is I don't like how it squirms. Like, Spore, they could have done a lot more with this game. Like, if there was, like, an aquatic stage, not the cell stage, but, like where you just remain in the water and become an aquatic creature, that would have been really cool, you know, like, living life in the ocean as, like, an ocean dweller. That would have been really cool, but... Unfortunately, that didn't happen, so... So you get what you get, and you don't get upset. That's what they say, you know? But yeah, let me know what you think of this guy in the comment section down below. And without further ado, let's move on to the next one. Up next, we have the Carcara Dominus, or the Megalodon Descendant. Now with this guy... He kind of looks like a shark, you know, with the shark head and the... Um, and the dorsal fin, it looks like an actual shark. I don't know how I feel about the sound effects, but that's just the sounds that come with the mouth, I guess. But yeah, let me know what you think of this creature in the comment section down below. And without further ado, let's move on to the next one. Up next, we have the Durham Poseidon. We didn't really get a good look at it in the, um, in the, uh, size chart thing. So, here's a good look at this guy. Notice how it's completely covered in armor. That was my goal. I know he sounds like a mammalian, but in my opinion, it was the mouth that worked the best. So, yeah. And he's got the little sail on his back and a little sail pointing down below his tail and the bony fins and... Yeah, this guy looks really cool in my honest opinion. Sorry if the aquatics squirm a lot, but can't really do much when it comes to aquatic creatures, if you know what I mean. But yeah, let me know what you think of this guy in the comment section down below. And without further ado... <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. Up next, we have the Gigantocetus, or the um, Leviathan Descendant. Like, it has like a barracuda mouth because it was the closest that um, thing that I had to a whale. You know, and... Uh, but yeah, and it's got the little blow hole on its head, and 
the more dorsal fins and tail fins and petrol fins and it kind of looks like an actual porpoise you know that was my intention but yeah let me know what you think of this creature in the comment section down below and uh without further ado let's move on to the next one up next we have the leviadon or the Lyopleurodon descendant. Now this guy basically kind of looks like the um, the uh, Colossosaurus, except a little smaller. Yeah, and he like if you look at him like the the colors I used for this guy, he kind of looks like the uh, the spore sea monster, that boring sea monster you would see in the creature stage. But yeah, let me know what you think of this creature in the comment section down below. And yeah, without further ado, let's move on to the next one. Up next we have the Megacalon, or the, um, Acalon Descendant. Now for this guy, I didn't really know what to do with him, so I just added a frill on his head and these tail fins protruding his tail. But yeah, he's like a sea turtle of some kind, and, you know, he's just, uh, I know he's squirming around a lot, but, you know. I had... I don't know why I added the frill. I guess I wanted to get creative with this guy. I don't know, but you be the judge. Let me know what you think of this creature in the comment section down below. And yeah, without further ado, let's move on to the next one. Up next, we have the Octo Crab, which is basically a native creature. It's a giant crab that lives in the oceans and beaches, basically. And yeah, like, with this guy, I kind of wanted to make him look like a giant ball with arms and legs and stuff like that. You know, it's just like a, he's called an octo crab because he has eight limbs. You know, like eight, four arms and four legs. He kind of reminds me of like the Carcanos, you know, the Carcanos from Arc Aberration. Yeah, that's what it kind of reminds me of. Yeah, and he makes a lot of clicking noises like an insect because that properly suits him in my opinion. Because technically he is an arthropod, so... Yeah, so it kind of makes sense. But yeah, let me know what you think of this guy in the comment section down below. I really like the armor surrounding him. And also, let me know if you want me to do a creepy crawlies video of Magnus creatures in the comment section down below. And yeah, without further ado, let's move on to the next creature. Up next, we have the Sea Tiger. Now with this guy, he's basically a cross between a tiger and a sea lion. That was the joke. Instead of sea lion, sea tiger, you know? And I added, like, fur and tiger stripes, and it was orange and black, you know? And in my opinion, he looks decent. He only has, like, two legs that helps him walk on land. Yeah, he can go on land, but he won't be as fast on land as he is in the water. I'm just going to say that right now. And he's got gills, too, to help him breathe underwater, you know? So, yeah, let me know what you think of this guy in the comment section down below. And without further ado, let's move on to the next one. Up next, we have the Sea Goat. 
Now with this guy, it's it's self-explanatory. It's supposed to be a cross between a goat and a manatee. You know how they have the sea cow? Well, I figured this would be the sea goat, you know? <laughs> He looks, I kind of wanted to make him look as adorable as possible because manatees are supposed to be these harmless creatures, harmless creatures that, um, that only want to be left alone and just graze on underwater plant life in peace, you know? <laughs> But he's also not afraid to fight back if he must, you know. But they are extremely docile, though, so... Yeah. Let me know what you think of this guy in the comment section down below. And, uh... Without further ado, let's move on to the next one. Up next, we have the Basilocetus, or the Basilosaurus Descendant. Now with... Now with this guy... He doesn't look too much different. He doesn't look too different from the actual um, Basilosaurus, but he looks different enough where you can tell it's an actual creature, I guess. If you know what I mean. It's like, and this creature is not quite as large as the Gigantocetus, but still large in its own right. It looks pretty basic, you know? I did, like, a basic job with this guy, but yeah. Let me know what you think of this creature in the comment section down below. And without further ado, let's move on to the next one. Up next, we have the Krakenite. Now, this guy... I kind of wanted to keep this guy, you know, docile and pretty small, you know, because it's an Ammonite descendant. So, yeah... It looks pretty basic, I guess. You got the tentacles and the, the shell, I think that is. and the, um, It kind of looks like a giant orthocone or like a baculites or something like that, but it's actually not, so... Yeah. It looks pretty basic, but yeah, let me know what you think of this guy in the comment section down below. And uh, without further ado, let's move on to the next one. Last but not least, we have the Loch Prodigium, or the Plesiosaurus Descendant. Now, with this guy, I was only able to do what the complexity meter would allow, because they don't take kindly to creatures with more than one head. The reason I wanted the Loch Prodigium to have like three heads is basically because it's like basically supposed to be a cross between the Loch Ness Monster and the Hydra. That was my goal here. So, yeah. But yeah, other than the three heads, it's pretty basic. But yeah, let me know what you think of this guy in the comment section down below and, uh... But yeah, without further ado, that is going to have to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. It would really help out a ton. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next one.